Okay, we have here to another interesting integral from the MIT integration B. This one's from 2011, problem number eight. We have the integral of the square root of cosecant x minus sine x dx. Okay, now this is actually a pretty straightforward integral, but the interesting thing I came across is when I looked at the solutions, I had a different solution from MIT, and then when I checked well from alpha, they had a third solution. Now all three solutions are kind of similar, so I don't want to make too big a deal out of it but there is a difference and there's kind of a little bit of a controversy. And again, it is kind of a straightforward problem, so I'm really just kind of focusing on this difference in solutions and what we can do about that. Okay, so to get started with this, I'm just gonna rewrite it a little bit. I'm gonna write my cosecant as one over sine x. And then of course, we're subtracting sine x here. And then what I'm gonna to wanna to do is get a common denominator so I can put these two together. So I'm gonna multi so multiply by sine x over sine x here to get a sine squared in the numerator there. And then when I put those two together in the radical, I'm gonna have one minus sine squared x divided by sine x. But then from there with one minus sine squared there, I can write one minus sine squared x as cosine squared x over sine x dx. And then at this point, I just wanna notice a couple of things. Now for cosine squared x, this always has to be positive. Because even when we have negative values for cosine, we square when they become positive. But now sine x is gonna be positive in quadrants one and two, and it's gonna be negative in quadrants three and four, the bottom half of the unit circle. But because the numerator is always positive, we can't really have negative values of sine here, because then the whole thing is gonna be negative inside the radical. We need this to be real. So our demand for this thing, if I just draw the unit circle carefully, or somewhat carefully, so for our demand of this integral, we're only considering values in quadrant one and two and rejecting quadrant three and four. So now from here, when I take the square root of cosine squared x, I get cosine x, but now I need absolute value on this thing because again, we're including quadrant two and the values of cosine are negative here. So we actually need to keep the absolute value on it right here. And then we're gonna just square root of sine x in the denominator. And now at this point with the absolute value here, we need to actually break this into cases because in quadrant one, cosine is gonna be positive. In quadrant two, cosine is gonna be negative. So we actually have two values for this. So what I'm gonna do is first case one, I'm gonna look at quadrant one. And so for quadrant one, cosine's positive, I can just drop the absolute value and we're integrating cosine x over square root of sine x. And of course, this isn't too bad. I'm gonna do a u substitution. I'm gonna call my u equal to sine x. My du is gonna be cosine x dx. And then when I substitute that, we just have our du in the numerator. Square root of sine x, I'm gonna write that as u to the one half, but it's in the denominator, so I'm gonna write that as u to the minus one half. Integrating that with power rule, we're gonna have two u to the one half but then I can just back substitute here. So then the solution to this is just gonna be two square root of sine x plus c. Okay, now for quadrant two, really similar of course, cosine of x, cosine has to be negative in this region. So to drop our absolute value, what I need to do is I need to bring a minus sign up front, or I could put the minus on the cosine, but I'm just gonna bring it up front of the integral. And then of course, we're gonna have just the same exact integral we just did in quadrant, run, quadrant one. And so we do the same u substitution, we do the same steps, we're gonna get that, but with a minus in front. So what we're gonna get in quadrant two is we're gonna get a minus two square root of sine x plus c. And so putting those two together, I actually get two different solutions, right? In quadrant one, I got a positive two, in quadrant two, I got minus two. So for my solution, I'm gonna write this as plus or minus two square root of sine x plus c. Okay, so that's my solution. We have that here on the board right here. So next, let's look at MIT solution, of course really similar, but they just don't, they just wrote it as two sine x plus c. So I was really surprised that this is what they had. Like if you did this integral, like if you made this a definite integral in quadrant two, well then this is wrong. I don't know if maybe they had some note in the test that said maybe just don't worry about it and, and leave off any plus or minus, or don't worry about absolute values, that's possible. But they do have a different solution, so I wanted to put that right there. And now the really interesting solution came from Wolfram Alpha and I wrote that down. So let me copy that onto the board while you guys aren't looking. So Wolfram Alpha solution is two tan x times square root of cosine x cotangent x. That was kind of surprising, but what I want to do is let's break it down into sine and cosines and see if we can simplify this and make some sense out of it. So I'm going to break down tan as sine x over cos x and then cotangent of course we'll write as cosine x over sine x. I don't know why I boxed myself in that way, but whatever. So now I'm gonna take this and rearrange it. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna group the signs together. So we're gonna have this, I'm gonna write this one as a square root of sine x here. And then we're gonna have, here we're gonna have a cosine, we're gonna have this cosine x in the denominator and this is gonna be square root of cosine squared x. 
Okay, now from here, when I divide a sine of the half x into sine x, that's gonna give me square root of sine x, and that's, that's at my t solution, but we still have got more to go. So then when we take the square root of cosine squared x, I can write this as absolute value of cosine x over cosine x. And this is actually pretty interesting, as you notice in the second quadrant, cosine of x becomes minus cosine of x, and then this part is gonna be minus one, and then in quadrant one, the absolute value goes away and we just have one. So really what's happening here, this becomes plus or minus one. So to me, my solution and Wolfram Alpha solutions are equivalent. I don't know if maybe their way to write it is the better way to write it. I mean, I know you usually don't want two solutions for an integral, so maybe that's the problem with my solution. Anyway, let me know in the comments out of these three solutions, which do you think are right? Which do you think are wrong? Do you think maybe we just shouldn't worry about it? Or is there like a fourth solution? Maybe the answer to this is seven. I don't know, but just let me know your thoughts if you have a better solution or maybe the solution is just like shut up and put down an answer. I don't know. <laughs> Stopping it there. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day.